Hello, I'm Roland Parker. I'm the general manager of the Ramona Pageant Association. The cities of Hemet and Santa Santo invite you to come and enjoy the Ramona Pageant held each spring in the Ramona Bowl. Here is some of the color and pageantry that you can expect to see. Welcome to a great California tradition, the Ramona Pageant. The story of Ramona was written in 1884 by Helen Hunt Jackson, dramatizing the plight of the Southern California Mission Indians. While it's only a novel, Mrs. Jackson's book is based on historical facts. For example, the story's climax was derived from the actual murder of Juan Diego, an Indian who lived in the mountains just a few miles from the Ramona Bowl. One night in 1883, Juan Diego rode his small pony into San Jacinto and left it at Hewitt's Corral for the night. When Juan Diego returned to the corral, he did not take his own horse, but rode off instead on a horse belonging to Sam Temple, a local wagon driver. Juan was known to have crazy spells from time to time, which probably accounts for his actions. Temple's reaction was to arm himself and ride straight to Juan's door, where he shot and killed the Indian. Returning to San Jacinto, Temple told the local justice of the peace that Juan had come at him with a knife and that he had only shot in self-defense. The court believed Temple. Juan Diego's widow, a witness to the shooting, swore that Juan was unarmed but she was never asked to testify. This was just one of the tragic stories that Helen Hunt Jackson wove into Ramona. The result was the most popular Southern California novel ever published. Since 1923, the residents of Hemet and San Jacinto have given their time, energy and talent to produce an outdoor play which preserves the memory of Mrs. Jackson's classic story. Today, the Ramona pageant is the oldest continuing outdoor play in America. During the first few years, things were rather primitive. The ranch set was nothing more than painted canvas stretched over a wooden frame. The audience climbed steep trails from below only to sit among the rocks and sagebrush on the hillside. Within a few years, the first concrete seats were installed and a road was built leading up to the Ramona Bowl. As the fame of the Ramona pageant grew, so did its audience. People still come from all over the nation to relive the days of the old California again and again. To this day, the Ramona pageant is one of the state's most beloved tourist attractions. The loyalty and devotion of the people of Hemet and San Jacinto is shown annually by the sheer numbers necessary to produce the show. With approximately 400 cast members and another 500 in backstage help, the Ramona pageant has attracted more than 2 million viewers over its history. Brigandi, curator of the Ramona Bowl Museum, tells us some of the pageant's history. The original promoters of the Ramona pageant had one wonderful bit of good fortune in 1923 when they were preparing for the first Ramona pageant. They secured the services of Garnet Holm, the acknowledged master of outdoor pageantry. It was Holm who first managed to produce a successful play based on Mrs. Jackson's novel, something no one else had ever quite been able to do. Garnet Holm also suggested finding a natural amphitheater to stage the pageant in. This led to locating the Ramona Bowl, where the pageant has been put on every year. 
gone at home also made the point that it would be local actors that would make the play successful. Not professionals, but local people. And he wrote the play, wrote the script, with local amateur actors in mind. And of course, those local actors are what have kept the pageant alive for so many years. The contribution put in by people for 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years in the Ramona pageant have been what has kept it alive since 1923. Of course, only the leads in the Ramona pageant are professional actors. Uh, in recent years, we've seen some local people filling the role, which is a really nice, uh, really nice state of affairs. But in the early days, we brought people in from Los Angeles, from Hollywood, and along the way, had a few famous faces show up in the uh, cast of the Ramona pageant. So probably the most significant was Victor Jory, who many of the old-timers will remember, uh, and also his wife, Jean Innes. In more recent times, uh, many people are aware that uh, the 1959 Ramona was a young high school student out of San Diego named Raquel Tejada, who later, as Raquel Welch, uh, earned her share of fame in Hollywood. Uh, then, ten years after that, in 1969, Ann Archer was our Ramona, who, of course, has received an Academy Award nomination now. And we... The Ramona pageant of 1990 still owes much to the shows of the past, yet there always seems to be something new. The last few years have found a greatly enhanced sound system, a stage area that has nearly doubled in size, and the addition of subtleties in many of the characters that will surely entertain. Dolores, you get in the house! There a part of the play since 1952, Maurice Hara and his wife Hilda have the monumental task of directing the multitude of local talent. We ask Maurice to tell us about the play. It's a timeless story of man's inhumanity towards man, and uh, I think people like to see something very dramatic of this type happening. And it is, uh, it tells the story of Ramona and Alessandro, of course, the main story, and then the story of the Indians who were here before the Spanish came, and uh, then the Spaniards coming into this area, and then the Anglo-Saxon, which... Uh, and we tell about three periods in the play, and it's, uh, it's interesting. It's interesting because uh, these period things uh, it gives us an opportunity to, uh, to show costumes from those different eras. Let me tell you something that I, I really love this show, and uh, it, it's something that I understand. The, I understand the Indian point of view, and I understand the, the early California situation. And uh, so that it fit very well into the type of work that I've always wanted to do in my life. You were asking me why the production has lasted so long, and that's the, the one thing that I haven't been able to figure out. I have no idea, except that people see it. They are surprised first when they first come over here to see the show. They don't expect the grandeur of it, the, the bigness, the, uh, the, the things that take place. So they're much affected by it, and they in turn tell other people about it, and they keep coming back year after year to see the show, and that's the only thing that I can say about that. Becoming a part of the Ramona pageant is something that stays with you forever, and some people just seem to fit into the part as no one else could. A good example of this is the part of Juan Canito. The narrative force in the show this role carries quite a large responsibility. For more than 35 years, Watson Gilmore has played this role. Uh, the part of Juan Canedo is uh, uh, fairly important to the play because it has the, uh, the narrative part. Uh, it puts the whole show together and it uh, has a comedy relief, a lot of plot lines. It opens and closes the show, and uh, so it's, it's a pretty nice part to play. I played Farrar for uh, three or four years, years ago, and, and that's a real good part, except that you gotta, you gotta fight the horse, you see. And that's why I tried for the part of Juan Canito, because 
I just had me to look after and uh, made it a lot easier. The day of fiesta comes, and with it, all the final preparations. Preparations for a time of music, a time of laughter, a time of dancing, and a time of feasting. All the ranchos in the valley, and even far off Ruby Doo, send men with gifts to celebrate Felipe's fine recovery. Gifts of sheep, of venison, and beef for barbecue. Fat chicken soon to be prepared for stuffing and for roasting. Sacks of golden fruit and rich green vegetables. Demijohns brim full of early California vintage. All brought from many, many miles away. Another long-term cast member is Bob Taylor. Playing Father Salvatierra has become a yearly ritual with deep meaning. Uh, the part of Salvatierra is uh, that of a Franciscan friar who comes out from the early missions and, and conducts services at the various ranchos and mission stations along the route. The pageant is a very visible demonstration of, of the problems of racial prejudice. Um, and seeing it, I think, makes us become more aware of um, the problems that different racial groups may have living within our, our complex society. I cannot bear to see her touch my son. Senora, certainly in moments like these, you should put away such thoughts. You are right, Padre, I, I should. I have prayed to God that I could really love Ramona, but I cannot. She is no child of mine. For my dead sister's sake, I, I will do all I can for the girl. She shall never want. But I... But I cannot make myself love her. The ways of God are mysterious. He alone rules all hearts. Padre, Alessandro has stopped singing. I must go to my son. Wait, senora, wait. First come, my daughter. Come and pray with me. Come, senora. Come. Show him the paper, Padre. Show him the paper. I have here, sirs, the deed by which Isidro holds the land, signed in proper form by the governor of California. <laughs> You're out of date, and so is that paper. All of this land belongs to the United States government, and this piece has been sold to me. But this man has a direct from the government. It cannot be taken. Oh, yeah? Well, guess again. This here is my agreement and concession. Now, the sooner that end gets out, the better for all concerned. Your paper's in proper form. You bet it is. It's legally drawn and legally paid for. Now you'd better see legally get that What the hell are you doing? Along with showing the struggle of the Indians to keep their native land, the Ramona pageant strikes very deep into the heart of prejudice in early California history. Please stay, Alessandro. We shall have some dances and good times together. I do not think the senora would mind a bit. You are so different from the others. The others? You mean the Indians? No, Margarita. I am the same. I am Indian. But you are not like the usual... I am Indian. Sometimes I have dreamed of a home, but to what end? What thoughts for me of love, peace, or joy? Alexander. I seek for new justice. I am an outcast, an Indian. Do you understand? Alexander, what are you saying? Forgive me. I forget myself. Although prejudice was strong, there were those who tried to overcome such thoughts. Oh, she shall go. Where I care not. Let her depart and live as she pleases. Let her be mistress to that dirty Indian. Mother, you have said too much. Know this. Had Ramona not loved Alessandro so, I would have asked her to be my wife. Felipe! If this story has a real villainess, it would be the Senora. Deeply troubled by Ramona's growing love for Alessandro, she would stop at nothing to shatter the bond between the two young lovers. Felipe is my son and will feel as I do. You will find yourself mistaken, Senora. 
Felipe is Alessandro's friend and mine. Oh, you consider yourself all-powerful in my poor house. No, senor. Enough! Your obstinacy decides me. Sit down. Sit down! The very dramatic role of Ramona is played this year by Nancy Henry of Hammett. Nancy tells us how she sees the character of Ramona. The role of Ramona, she's not for sure until about midway of the play who she actually is or where she came from, any of her background. And it's very frustrating for her because throughout the whole play, she doesn't know any of her history. Some of the great love scenes in the play between Ramona and Alessandro, the first scene where they actually are shown to the audience together. It's what they call with the jug scene at the well and their eyes meet and they both know that there's something romantically there and they develop it later on in the play with the rose scene when she hands him the rose and he gives her a basket which is kind of like a gift um, it keeps cultivating to the climactic scene of their love scene when they have what they call the ramada scene where they both profess their love to one another and but alessandro I want you to stay. I so desperately want you to stay. <laughs> Tears have come again into the eyes of the senorita. And she will not be angry if I... Yes, Alessandro. If I tell her, I love her. I know that you love me, and I am glad of it. But the senorita, would she? No. How could she love an Indian? Yes, Alessandro, I do mean it. I love you. Senorita. His first time in the role of Alessandro, Jeff Griggs as a resident of Woodland Hills, California. We asked Jeff, what makes this place so special? I tell you, I think the most exciting thing about it is, and this is a vague answer, but it's the color and the spectacle and the size of all of it. I mean, you've got uh, those incredible dresses that the women wear, the Mexican dresses and all the fabulous outfits, and, and the dancers, the Indian dancers and the Mexican dancers. The music, we finally got around to it. The music is probably my favorite part. I remember we were rehearsing a couple weeks back, and I was doing my final scene up on the rock, uh, up above, and uh, the music filtered in behind me, and it, was, it, it moved me, and I've been rehearsing for, for months, and it, it was beautiful, just beautiful. The most difficult part of the show to me is climbing up that hill right behind me, and uh, perching up on top of that mountain until I'm supposed to come down. Um, then when I finally run down the hill, I'm truly exhausted when I come down. It's not an act, <laughs> so it actually works in the, in the show. Senorita! Senorita! Alessandro! 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 Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Alessandro! I am not strong. I could not go away forever without, without one last sight of your face. What is your favorite scene to play? You know, it may be when he's going crazy towards the end, in the third act, when, uh, when people have taken his land and he doesn't know where to do, where to go, where to turn. Um, that's quite, a, quite an emotional scene. It's a lot, it's a lot of fun to play that. Well, it, takes, it takes a lot out of you, but it's a lot of fun to play it. Remember now, four days! Four hours, not four days. The winds are free and so shall we be. With our child, we will wander far across the mountains, free, free. Oh, she hungry, she would die. Die. How could I speak so? Yes. Yes, you and the little one would die. Oh, my hell, God has forgotten us. You have 
God, for God! You must, must not speak so, Alessandro! Yes, Mary, yes! The saints have deserted us. They no longer heed our prayers. Come, let us go! Where? Where can we I go? I cannot wear! As long as I never see another white man again, they are cruel. God is cruel. Come! Alessandro! Come, Mary! Of the nearly 400 cast members, at least half of them are under the age of 18. And all of them are local, with new performers joining the cast every year. The attraction for the participant, as well as the spectator, is the same as it was 50 years ago. What is your favorite scene? Um, I think the fiesta. Mi casa es su casa. May your visit be long and your hours filled with happiness. For the long journeys you have made and the music and laughter you have brought to us, you have our deepest gratitude. I like uh, the part with Joe and Aunt Rye. It was so kind of your father, Joe, to give us half his animal. Eh, ah, shucks. We couldn't use it all anyways. Joe! Here come on out. Oh, oh. Joe! Oh, Joe! You didn't hurt yourself, did ya? Now, don't go a-breaking a leg just when we're getting started. Eh, ah, shucks, Ma. I'm all right. Look at that there little saucepan, Joe. Hand it up to me. If you bent that and too bad, we're just out of luck. You know the big one's got no handle, and the middle one's got a hole in it. Do we need this old bucket, Ma? Sure, son, you don't never throw away old buckets till you get new ones. How about that kettle? I'd wrap it up in... The best part of the, <clears throat> the show to me is uh, the christening scene. Los vientos del valle abarán la línea. La hierba bailará bajo sus pies. The winds of the valley shall love the child. The grass shall dance beneath her feet. Rise, see it rise, rise, oh, rise. favorite scene of mine is the death of Alessandro <laughs> because uh, it's something very spectacular and uh, I think people are taken aback by it because they don't expect the thing that happens to happen. And it... If you have already seen the Ramona pageant, we would like to invite you back again. It's hard to tire of this classic. If you haven't seen the show, we invite you to visit the Ramona Bowl and pick up tickets for the coming season. Tickets are available beginning January each year. Don't forget to bring your friends, as large group reservations are always available. While at the Ramona Bowl, be sure to visit our fine museum, which houses memorabilia from every season of the Ramona pageant since 1923. As we leave this beautiful setting, we join the cast of the Ramona pageant in saying farewell to Rancho Moreno. God, send the Indians justice and a part of the vast heritage that once was there. So, may it be, the future lies with God. For the last time, ring out the old ranch bell. Amigos, amigos, my story now is told. For pageant dates and showtimes, call the Ramona Pageant Ticket Office at 714-658-3111.